counselors, our music department, our administration, our friends from across the way over at East Syracuse Panola's Athletic Department. Uh, it's a real community event, so I want to thank everybody that has participated. Give yourselves a round of applause for participating in such a beautiful event tonight.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the James Willowitz Central High School here in DeWitt, New York for the biggest regular season game of the year. That's right, it's the fourth annual Hoops for Courage game between the visiting East Syracuse Manoa Spartans and the James Willowitz Red Rams. Hi everybody, Sam Gelfan, the voice of the Red Rams here alongside my broadcast partner Nick DeCaney for what should be an extremely hot match. This roof is going to burn up. The atmosphere inside this gym is absolutely electric. And we already have our first stoppage of play. But it is one of the few times I've heard this gym get this loud already at the start of the game. Well, the flock is out in full force tonight. The entire student section is full. And with good reason, not only are ESM and JD bitter rivals, but this game is drawing a lot of money for charity as well. So everyone's coming together for a great cause tonight as the Red Rams already off to the races here. That's Ian Delpha passes it to Anthony Stickle. Stickle on the run, tries to find Scalinger under the net. They keep it alive over the hands of Delpha, and it goes ESM's way. And a nice opening defensive possession there for the Spartans, moving as a unit all collectively and gets a clutch stop on the first possession. You know, sometimes they talk about big fight feel before something like a boxing match. And this certainly has a Tyson Holyfield energy to it, doesn't it? Kristen Henderson cannot find the basket. Aiden Bates, who is a dynamic three-point shooter to Skellinger, Koberger, no look pass to Anthony Stickle, a little too no look. Yeah, and could be some of those early game jitters. This is such a big game, such high stakes between two great rivals. A lot of nerves going, and it's tough to contain them in the early moments. This certainly is a big fight field tonight. The JD gym has not seen this many people in it in years, perhaps since the last Hoops for Courage game in 2020. Now Andrew Graham passing over to Cesarini and taken away by Koberger. His first steal of the night on the run, gives it to Stickle under the basket, swings it out to a wide open Ian Delpha. It's the top of the backboard and rebounded by Cole Thomas. And again, just some of those early game jitters, especially out of a, an amazing shooter like Ian Delpha, very uncharacteristic of him to miss like that. Now Yuzman Kalkan passes over to Andrew Graham for three. And the first three points of the day go to the ESM Spartans. As Ian Delpha walks it across half court. Aiden Bates for three. Rattles out, Scalinger's putback does as well. And rebounded by Cole Thomas. We often talk about how the JD Gym can be a hostile atmosphere for visiting teams, but it almost seems like it's affecting the Red Rams more than the Spartans right now. Yeah, and certainly JD brought a lot of their student section tonight. The flock really did a great job of getting everyone to come out and support, but ESM has a formidable student section as well, even at the JD Arena, so they're certainly playing a factor in this as well. Calkin. Kept close by Stickle right now. Passes it to Thomas. Graham inside to Henderson. Henderson guarded by Koberger, but he still puts up two. And that's going to be the matchup to look for down low all game tonight. Tristan Henderson versus Brendan Koberger. Two really prolific scorers, and they're going to be duking it out all night long. Henderson's only played in 12 games this season, but he scored 10 or more points in eight of those 12 games. Super consistent basketball player. Went up against him on the volleyball court as well. And a great opponent there. Yeah, but you stuffed him. Uh, maybe once or twice. Now Delpha to Stickle. 2-3 zone employed by ESM, as is by most teams. Koberger. Out to Delpha. No one covers him. A little bit short. Koberger with the putbacker. And puts up the first two points for the Red Rams. And how much did they need that? Especially after two big misses in the face of the ESM student section. Such a clutch bucket. But Graham was left open too, but Koberger gets the rebound. 
And rebounding will be a key throughout this entire game. Physical still gets the end one. Jim Kilpatrick pleading his case to the referee, but it falls on deaf ears, or perhaps he just can't hear him because this gym is very loud. And Brendan Kohlberg has been on fire in his past two games, 27 points respectively in each, and you can best believe he's going to bring it tonight. We've talked throughout the season about how unique this gym is. There is no soundproofing in here, nothing in the rafters as there are in many gyms as Kohlberger's th free throw is off which means it gets so much louder in here with all the reflective surfaces and no sound absorbent padding. Such a unique gym, you won't find anything else like it within section three. And as you said, makes it very challenging for the away teams. And of course, we've talked about the connection to the Loud House as well as Henderson denied by Skellinger. There might not be two teams more connected to Syracuse University than JD and ESM. As it's poked out of Matt Keeler's hands, he gets it back. Koberger, Henderson, a formidable foe in the paint. And Skellinger can't put it back, rebounded and said by Aiden Betts. There may not be two teams more connected to Syracuse University. Of course, head coach Jeff Ike of JD regularly talks to Jim Beheim. He's good friends with him. They bounce ideas off of each other. After all, the Beheim sent all of their kids to JD in pri uh, previous years. Jim Kilpatrick, the head coach of ESM, as a kid was a ball boy for Syracuse University, claims to be a Jim Beheim super fan, has watched every single coaching clinic he's ever put on, follows his strategies religiously. Yeah, and the orange blood runs deep throughout all of central New York. And you're absolutely right, both of these teams connected so out of this university, and you can feel it in the atmosphere tonight. Calkin. To Betts now, driving in, doesn't work. Stickle gets a hand on it. Andrew Graham keeping him honest. Little bump and go, and it's off the front of the rim. Stickle gets his own rebound, pulls up at the line, and it's off the mark. Shooting percentage will be an issue for the Red Rams tonight. In the last time these two teams played, the Spartans did shoot better than the Red Rams. Yeah, and that was a narrow win over uh, a three-point win for the Red Rams as a part of their 12-game win streak. But interesting point to mention, ESM the only team to surpass 50 points on JD within their 12-game win streak. It was also the closest margin of victory in this winning streak of any team they faced. They only won 56 to 53 when they played each other on January 24th. And that came, game came down to a lot of clutch baskets, especially from Anthony Stickle, two free throws at the end of the game to seal it. And I wouldn't be surprised if this one ends similarly. Skellinger, Koberger, bucket! And the Red Rams take their first lead of the game at six to five. We thank each and every one of you for joining us for this incredible matchup tonight. Don't forget we have a comment section here on JDTV. We're looking at it. Feel free to share your thoughts on tonight's game or perhaps a Ben Skellinger's rebound. And if we like what you say, we might even read it out on the air. Now Ian Delpha into Matt Keeler, out to Bates, pulls up. And it's off the base of the backboard, rebounded by Henderson, who else? Calkin rolls off, Henderson puts it back, doesn't work, and tipped in with a little soft touch. Yeah, and Henderson, such a big frame at six foot six, so much to deal with in that paint, and the rebounds are going to be a key factor in tonight's matchup. That was Cole Thomas with two points there. Just over a minute left in the first quarter, Ian Delpha finds nothing but net. And Delpha has added a couple of points per game to his total in just the last few games. He is so on fire. Whatever three game winners he had just now have left the room. Same cannot be said for Ben Skellinger, who's still yet to hit a bucket. And a 30 second timeout called by ESM. Man, this first quarter feels like a track meet. I gotta catch my breath. 
back and forth up and down the court and very few timeouts. It's maybe only the second one call, called so far. The first one called so far, actually. And why don't we take a look at what happened the last time these two teams faced each other. The Red Rams were actually out-rebounded by the Spartans, 35-27. to 27. They were outshot by the Spartans, 40.4 to 37.5, but here's the two difference makers. One, free throw percentage, nearly a 30-point difference between the two teams. Two, the Spartans put up a lot more turnovers than the Red Rams did. And the Red Rams scored 20 points off the turnovers in that last game. The Spartans only won. And we've watched Shady so much this season and a staple to their game is playing good defense, getting it out in transition, and creating fast break opportunities. They're so good at doing that as a team, working together as a unit, and they're going to need to do the same tonight if they want similar results. Calkin pass to Betts into Henderson. And Brendan Koberger is having a defensive quarter like we haven't seen this entire season. That is perfect defense on a very tough opponent has the height disadvantage, can play up to his size, and without fouling. And he can put up buckets like that. It's rare that we see Koberger have a height disadvantage. He is six foot four, but Tristan Henderson standing in at six foot six. The Red Rams successfully confused them with the countdown. Desperation three from Delpha almost hit, but that's the end of the first quarter. That's the first time we've seen the old fake shot clock uh, trick actually work. Yeah, and when you have a, a fan base this big, you can get everyone yelling at them. And when the, when the clock is close to that five second mark, you can really convince the other team into thinking they got to shoot the ball. It's better than we saw in the girls game last night where they were trying it with like 30 seconds still on the cl shot clock. That wasn't going to do anything. Yeah, that was poor execution. But speaking of execution, both of these teams have done so effectively this season. The Red Rams have only scored a few more points than the Spartans have on average throughout this season, but the Spartans are allowing more points against them. They also rely more on two-pointers than the Red Rams do, who have really been getting a lot more comfortable in three-point land as the season has progressed. Red Rams also put up more free throws, which, as we already saw in the last game, is a big factor. Yeah, and both of these teams actually kind of had a similar start to the season. ESM starting 0-4 to start their season, and JD with a 1-5 start. A lot of those against AA schools. But both of these teams kind of had to find their footing as the season progressed, and it's turned into what a great matchup it is tonight. Red Rams lead 11-7 as we begin the second quarter. Graham now over to Abreu. Graham playing point guard here tonight. Pass out to Betts. Can't hit Henderson. Where did that go? And what you won't see from that last possession is the help defense from Brendan Kohlberger coming off of that backside uh, baseline to be able to help Kohlberger uh, fight off Tristan Henderson. Gillinger hits Delpha and avoids the backcourt violation. Anthony Stickle will hold on for just a moment. ESM playing man-to-man -man momentarily. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Ian Delpha. Stickle swims through the block and sinks the bucket. That was a thing of beauty. Yeah, Anthony Stickle is such a sharp shooter for this team. He anchors them home when it comes time to hit the three ball. And you see why there. And come around the back is Cole Thomas, but he does not score. Koberger with a rebound. And again, it's Ben Skellinger on the defensive side, making plays that no one's going to see. Won't still up on the stat sheet, yet he does it time in and time out. And that one will go out. Carter King was the intended recipient. They give that to the Red Rams, though. And Coach Ike, someone who shouts during a normal game where there's not 500 people in here. And Brendan Koberger will keep them loud. Ten points already. 
And I mentioned it earlier, Kohlberger on such a hot streak in his last two games. Almost 60 points combined in those two alone. So you know he's feeling it, and he's got all the confidence in the world. 500 might be a conservative estimate in this gym. I'm pretty sure it seats over 1,000. And ESM calls a second timeout. Let's take a look. I think this is the three-pointer from Stickle. Pump fake, leaves his man on his feet, and buries the three-pointer. Not only left him on his feet, he left him snoozing after that. If he wasn't in the air, he would have broken his ankles. The Red Rams may seem to rely on the scoring of Brendan Koberger here, but really so many members of this team contribute and the thing we've seen as this season has gone on is that it has become more and more of a team effort. We have seen more assists as each game goes on. Yeah, and even though they're still on this 12-game win streak, the wins, the quality of the wins in these last five or six games are much higher than they were at the beginning of that win streak. They're playing collectively as a unit. Aiden Bates has really stepped up. Ian Delfa making huge leaps in his last couple of games, 14 and their last against Oswego. Anthony Stickle always contributing. And again, you look to this, the defensive side, Benjamin Scalinger, Carter King, anchors on that, on that front, and they hold it home, home for these Red Rams. But now it's the Spartans who are on the move. Tristan Henderson has a little bit of patience and it brings him a bucket. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't matter how good of defense you play. When you have a great opponent like Tristan Henderson, he's going to make a few on you. Six foot six averages 11.5 points per game. Now Koberger tries to weave through two, loses it, but kept by the Red Rams. Now Stickle has 10 seconds on the shot clock to work with. Out to Delpha, Scalinger. Shakes his man, shakes a few, gets very close. And close enough to put up his first two of the night. An excellent patience from the Red Rams on that offensive possession. Nothing yet, ran all the way down to the shot clock and they found a good look. Calkin double teamed, finds Dylan Abreu. Out to Graham. Tipped by Scalinger, the Red Rams will be happy with that even though ESM maintains possession. Man, and how much would I hate to be an ESM player standing right in front of the entire James LeWitt student section on this inbound. That's got to be like at least a quarter of the school in front of us. Good sportsmanship there, Stickle helping up Dylan Abreu. Yeah, and you can get worked up as much as you want about the rivalry, about the outcome of the game. But at the end of the day, it's more than the game that we're here to talk about tonight. Of course, it's a Hoops for Courage game, and we'll tell you a little bit, mo a little bit more about what that means during the next timeout. But it's a great opportunity to raise a lot of money for a very good cause tonight. And they do it in the game where they know they're going to draw the most fans with a rivalry like this. Now Graham on the fast break, poked out, hits a cheerleader. But I'm sure she'll take it. She took it like a champ. Oh, yeah, that cheerleading team is tough. They actually have a sectional championship coming up this weekend. So all the JD programs doing extremely well this winter season. And poked out again by the Red Rams. Their tenacity on defense is simply unmatched throughout the entirety of Section 3. And a lot of that starts with Carter King. You see a player playing as hard as he is, you just feed off that energy, and you want to play the same way. And you could see it in that rebound by Ben Scalinger. Poked out from behind by Coleman, goes out of bounds. And they give that to ESM? I did not see a touch from a Red Rams player there. Yeah, and that's such a tough angle for us to see from up here, but we'll definitely take another look at that and see what the ref saw. Thomas to Andrew Graham. Graham averaging 7.7 .7 points per game this season. Across to Calkin. Off the side of the backboard, Henderson can't make up the difference. Neither can Thomas. Falling on it is King. 
and he is so physical. 30-second timeout taken by James Ollowit. And it does not matter how many points he scores in a game, Carter King does everything you want out of a basketball player, out of a football player and a baseball player. He gives maximum effort whenever he is on the court, and you see it almost every possession. Now, I'd love to talk a little bit more about Carter King, but we did promise that we talk a bit about the Hoops for Courage game. This is the fourth time that this game has been played. The first one is actually JD versus FM, then a couple versus ESM. On January 4th, 2019, JD won 68 to 54. Then on January 10th, 2020, the last time we saw them, ESM won on free throws. 49-47 at the very end of the game, but here's the good news. Each of these three games has raised somewhere between two and a half to $5,000 for charity for Camp Good Days, which is a 501c3, which raises money to send children with cancer to summer camp. It's a great cause. Let's them be kids for a little bit. We're so happy that we get to support it here at Jamesville DeWitt. Carter King decides against the look. Skellinger over to Delpha. Delpha to King. He has time for a three. Rattles off, rebounded though by Stickle. And a two for Skellinger. And we mentioned how important the rebounding game is going to be tonight. But how about Anthony Stickle, the undersized guard, out soaring up and above the ESM defender and creating second chance opportunities. Stickle's got hops tonight, that's for sure, as Graham charges in. Outside to Coleman, rolls off. Henderson can't put it back, instead sends it out to Abreu. Abreu to Henderson. Loses control of the pass, and that's Carter King once again doing what he does best, except the call goes against the Red Rams. But it is like a war zone down in that James Will DeWitt paint. So difficult, and so many defenders swarming to the ball. Whoever's got it, they are going to get attacked, and you're seeing it on that possession. Someone in the comments says, Coach Ike equals dad. I can't necessarily disagree, but you've never seen a dad who's better at coaching basketball than Coach Ike. And Dylan Abreu does not make it. Koberger comes down with a rebound. Man, I love our comment section, though. It's great. It's an underrated feature of the JDTV broadcast. Coach Ike does have big khaki, big khaki shorts energy, doesn't he? As Koberger puts up two more. Coleman pass over to Thomas as they cross half court. Betts was silent for a moment. And a push is called. You know, I don't want to take any credit here, but I kind of called that Brennan Kohlberger was going to have a game tonight. Well, to be honest, it's not a hard prediction to make. Okay, fair enough. Considering he is scoring 16.9 points per game right now, it's fair to say he's going to ball out on any given night. But still, he's almost matched that within the first half of basketball. That's true. He is 12 already. 140 left in the first half. This game is flying by, and it's almost a shame because you want to see more of this. At least we're going to have a whole second half. Tries to get it into bet swarmed. But he still finds the bucket. That's Cole Thomas. And finally, ESM able to end a long drought on that offensive side and get a much-needed basket. Now Stickle passed around to Skellinger. King across the way. Koberger close to the bucket. Rolls off King with another aggressive rebound. And Skellinger can't believe that foul was called on him. Yeah, and I can understand that frustration there. Didn't look like he used any hands. Kept them up the entire possession, but still got the foul call. Definitely questionable. 59 seconds remain in the first half. And two shots now for Usman Kalkin. He's made 23 free throws this season. Yeah, and listen to the flock making noise whenever someone's at the free throw line. 
It's unfortunate they're below the camera so you can't see them, but this is the most active student section I might have ever seen. And Kalkin now has his first point of the game. He averages 8.7, so an impressive feat so far for the Red Rams to keep him to this number is King. Cannot sink the jumper. Calkin sends it out. Thomas tries to hit Betts. And once again, King putting his body on the line for the ball. You can just see his tenacity. He wants every single loose ball that's on the ground. And he's able to get it in, in a lot of these situations. And he almost did there again. Once again, Carter King... Also a football player and a baseball player. He is a massive power hitter on the diamond and a very physical running back on the gridiron. Oh, man, and you are speaking to someone who knows firsthand what a, what a tackle from Carter King feels like. What does it feel like? It's like a, a bullet train coming at you. You don't even see it happen, and all of a sudden you're just on the ground. Monday afternoon, you think I want to go practice and do hitting drills against this guy? Well, you don't want to give Andrew Graham free throw opportunities. He makes two of two. Up to five points now. A press employed by ESM. Pokes out the ball. Stickle dives to keep it alive. Koberger weaves through two and finds the basket. It is like the basket is magnetic and Koberger is a man of steel. Ten seconds left. Don't let the crowd fool you. They almost did ESM. Yeah, and you mentioned Kohlberger just, it seems like he just finds the basket so easily, uses that height to his advantage on every possession, and he just takes easy, easy jump shots within the free throw line. And you can see why he averages so much, he, so much of his points on a nightly basis. As Dylan Abreu goes to the line now, this is kind of unusual. The Red Rams have had five fouls in this quarter, only two for ESM as Abreu makes his first free throw. Because the Red Rams are an extremely low fouling team. They only average 12.8 fouls per game. Abreu's second is sunk as well. Yeah, and if they're gonna foul this much, gonna be really important for ESM to connect on those free throws and make every opportunity. Koberger. Out to Scalinger. Misses the buzzer beater, but that is the end of the first half. The Red Rams leading 23 to 16 over the ESM Spartans in what is certainly the biggest regular season game of the season. Yeah, and Brendan Kohlberg, we talk about him every night, but you can't talk about him enough. He just finds the basket so easily. And not only that, but he's making plays, opportunities for his teammates. So I don't know if we saw Duffel with the big three. Bre Brendan Koberger, 14 points on the day and under the value point system where a one is an average player in terms of how they contribute themselves and the rest of the team. He's at a one, two, two. So he knows how to spread the love around as well. And now we're in halftime now. So we will step away for about nine minutes. Although if the cheerleaders are going to perform, you know what? We'll leave the camera on them, though. But the two of us will step away now for the next nine minutes until we come back with the start of the third quarter. Sam Gelfand and Nick DeCaney here for JDTV. Do not go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody, to the James Otowitz Central High School here in DeWitt, New York, for the start of quarter number three. In the Hoops for Courage game between the ESM Spartans and the James Otowitz Red Rams, Sam Gelfand and Nick DeCaney here for JDTV. And this has been an incredible matchup so far. And Anthony Stickle is causing me to lose my voice because it is so loud in here, and both of these teams are just playing so well. And I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Anthony Stickle is a three-point sharpshooter. He will make you pay time and time again, and you cannot leave him that open. No more shouting for me, I guess. Tristan Henderson not giving me anything to shout about either. Does that shot count, though? It does. Oh, and that's a frustrating possession for the Red Rams. Kohlberger got, gets the block on Henderson. They, get the, uh, they miss another layup, but they're unable to get that defensive rebound, and they get the and one. That's the first two points of the night for Aiden Betts. Keep in mind, he averages 10 and a half per game. Misses the end one. The Red Rams just have this knack for keeping big scorers quiet. And a lot of it is, is the ability to play defense as a unit and as a team. That's the only way you can shut down elite level scorers. And that's why the Red Rams are on an 11 game win streak right now. Anthony Sickle tries again. Koberger might give him a second chance. Instead, it's Aiden Bates over to Ian Delpha. And Graham rips it out, but calls it a jump ball. The Red Rams have not lost since December 21st. And now the Spartans might have a chance here. Thomas floats it in, rebounded by Scalinger. Oh, man, and you've got to capitalize on those opportunities for ESM. Down by almost 10 points in a game with this magnitude. When you have the open looks, you have to be able to sink them. The same could be said for JD, though, potentially, although there was a foul on that play, and Anthony, Anthony Stickle will go to the line. He's shooting 77.3 from the charity stripe, which is an apt name considering this is a game to raise money for charity. That's the one out of four that he misses, though. And Stickle misses both. Perhaps the pressure getting to him. And you were right. It goes both ways for these teams. You have to be able to make the baskets when you're given that opportunity. ESM has brought a large delegation to this game as well. Most of them violating the mask ordinance. But Tristan Henderson will not be silent six points tonight. Yeah, and the flock like not right now, a little bit quiet to open this second half. Got to give them something to cheer about and give them amped up. Bates, Stickle. A big three here from JT would really seal the deal. Delpha Bates, he's got all the time in the world. Red Rams now lead by nine. Graham across the way. Three pointer off the mark for Betts. Betts under the basket, can't finagle it, stickle with a rebound. Bumped there by Thomas, so he sent it to Delpha. Aiden Bates doesn't go two for two. Rebounded by Betts. Calkin can't do it. Neither can Thomas as he barrels into Aiden Bates. And he was hoping for a call there. Coach, I can't believe that that call went ESM's way. Yeah, it seemed like he ran into the, uh, looked like Anthony Stickle. So I'm surprised they called it on JD. Yeah, it looked like a straight charge into Aiden Bates, but. Instead, Thomas makes his first free throw. The referees see things that we don't, though. 
Yeah, and we have such a tough angle from up here. It's so hard to tell. There are some things we can see up here, but some things we can't. Well, I mean, that kind of, that encapsulates the entirety of human vision, but you know what I'm, you know what I mean. There's, from the higher up angle, we can see things like formations and sometimes things like reaching in, but other things, it's, it's just harder to see from this higher vantage point. But you can clearly see that Anthony Stickle knows how to get to the basket, though he couldn't make it. Delpha with a rebound. Stickle past Henderson off the hands of Bates, taken away by Cole Thomas. Ooh, that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, Aiden Bates almost didn't expect that pass from Stickle. Came out of nowhere and just kind of fell off his hands, but makes up for it with that defensive possession. Bates tipped the pass. Skellinger takes it across half court. Stickle, Delpha, round to Bates. Now it's Stickle, Delpha. Delpha takes the three. Off the mark, Yuzman Kalkin on the run. And the breakaway layup is good. And ESM opening the second half with a bit of a run. They've drawn it to within six already. Koberger decides against the jumper, gets a little bit closer, and with good reason. That's 16 points, and that's a timeout taken by East Syracuse Manoa. Now, there were a lot of missed shots in that first half, which ESM has been slowly working back from, but here's a look at their, free, at their field goal percentage the last time they played JD on January 24th. The black boxes are where they did not take any shots. The more saturated the color, the better they did. And it, as usual, they did much better very close to the basket, even though they were missing some high percentage shots earlier in this game. What concerned me though, looking at this and what we haven't seen from them yet tonight, is this little corner right here where they went three for four on three pointers taken. Yeah, and this Red Rams defense plays so well around the perimeter, they give teams no other choice but to feed it inside where they have really greedy defenders like Scalinger and King there to kind of stop that attack. So all through all levels of defense are executed so well by this red round. And the Spartans now have possession and hope to close off this eight point deficit. But a pass off the hands of Aiden Betts will not help them. You know, this is working a high pick and roll right now with Kohlberger, looking to get something inside. I see him post it up. That's where they want to get the ball. Anthony Stickle now for three. Off the mark, Kohlberger accidentally deflected it into the hands of Tristan Henderson. Yeah, and I don't love that shot selection. I feel like you could have gotten a little bit closer of a look, especially inside with the way Kohlberger's been playing tonight. Well, speaking of looks, there's one for Kalkin. Can't do it. Betts with a rebound. And a travel to the complete disbelief of Jim Kilpatrick. Look at him rave. And if the crowd was quiet, that call certainly awakened both sides. He has some fans booing on that call and the JD fans feeding off of it. Now it's important to keep things civil. I mean, they make me read a message before every game saying, hey, basically don't boo anybody, just cheer. But this is the kind of rivalry that'll bring that out of people. Yeah, and as sad as it is, you cannot expect that between a game like this. That was a beautiful pass to Matt Keeler, by the way. We were speaking at a, during halftime, this is a rivalry that really has history to it. A lot of years, and when you come to JD and you... Could, could be said for ESM as well. They're just a rival that you play a lot and you want to beat. And two points from Brendan Koberger will certainly help with that goal up to 18. I mean, just think of the last few times that these, team, these two teams played. The Red Rams only won by three earlier in the season. In the spring. Oh, what a block from Ben Skellinger putting the kibosh on those plans. 
Oh my goodness. Ben Skellinger out of nowhere. With some stank. Henderson goes to the line. I don't think they care. I don't think you can care after a play like that. LeBron-esque type block. And an air ball from Henderson. Oh, and that's going to get the crowd going. But as I was trying to say, go back to the spring, the one time these two teams played. Last game of the season, ESM wins at the buzzer with a half a second left. On a putback from a missed three-pointer. Before that, in 2020, these two, these two teams played in the sectional semifinals. Red Rams beat them at SRC Arena. Before that was the Hoops for Courage game where ESM won by just two. And speaking of two, there's two more for the man of the hour. Yeah, and that's such a unique part about this rivalry. You're going to see each other twice every single year when you play basketball. But not only that, they're often so well evenly matched teams. Both very well coached, and they bring it on the court every time they play. It was Coburn in the last basket, right? And Henderson can't do it. Keeler shakes Graham out of his shoes. Oh, he's going to need some new Jordans. Now let's talk about the history of this rivalry between these two teams. This is the 16th time that they have played each other in 10 years. JD has led the series so far 12 to 3. More raffle information going on right now. The last time they played each other, as we talked about, was on the 24th. JD won 56 53. The average score of a game between these two teams is 68 to 50, which is a big goal, but considering. The Red Rams teams of the past is actually fairly small compared to a lot of teams that the Red Rams face. And the Red Rams do lead 5-2 to two when playing in this gym. Yeah, but as you were just talking about, doesn't the home and field advantage doesn't always guarantee a win. That game two years ago when ESM came here and won on a last-second two-point shot, a heartbreaking loss at JD in the face of all of the student section. It was the first game back here that fans were allowed to, so you know that the Red Rams want to come out with a vengeance to avenge that game because a three-point win is not vengeance. Yeah, and you know Coach Ike's been talking to his team all week long preparing for this, and they, both of these teams really want this badly. ESM wants their redemption, and JD wants to prove to this, themselves that they are a far and above team better than ESM. Well, they're certainly doing it, leading by 13 right now. Graham loses the ball. And James Olawit getting a little ahead of themselves here. And now the ESM fans doing the same chance as the flock, and they're not happy about it. This is the kind of bad blood that is drawn at a JD ESM game. It's Yankees Red Sox. A lot of time, but Dylan Abreu can't do it. Yeah, and when you have a student section as small as they do compared to the size of JD, you can't be doing chants like that. Well, Matt Keeler's got to make shots like that to shut him up. Anthony Stickle will do it just fine. Abreu to Graham, back to Abreu. Pass Bates, not past Koberger. A brick wall in his face. And Stickle has it poked out on the run. Taken away by Cole Thomas, all the way down court. Now Abreu is stuffed by Matt Keeler. And he hit the ground hard. Yeah, and a contest all the way through that jump mid-air. And that's when it gets really dangerous. This game of basketball can land so awkwardly can cause a lot of, lot of injuries. We've been so lucky to have so many great games of basketball. Just the last time out here was J.D. against Fowler. Last home game, Jeff Ike 
became the third coach in JD history to score 100 wins with the team. Buzzer beater attempt is sunk by Aiden Betts. That's his fifth point and takes us to the close of the third quarter. Only one quarter left. Yeah, and that last three-pointer definitely not reflective of that entire quarter for both of these teams. ESM came out of that, that second, the first half, excuse me, with a vengeance, and they really were chipping away at this lead. It was down to six points at a certain point. But the Red Rams shut that up real quick and went on a big run. Now they're up 12 going to this fourth. And this one could come down to the wire like just about every JD ESM contest in the past has. Yeah, and the rivalry sometimes can do unspeakable things and for some amazing comebacks you would not have even thought of. ESM has never scored less than 37 points against the Red Rams in a game. They're at 27 right now. So the Red Rams are hoping that their defense holds firm. They'd love to set a new record there. The Red Rams also have never scored less than 47 points against ESM. And that kind of tailors into how JD wants to play this game. They want to con control the time of possession. They play great defense. They often limit their opponents to very few. They put up not a lot of points. And so this is really just kind of falling right into JD's style of play. And the fourth quarter is about to be underway. And ESM will take possession. And Koberger pokes it out, gotten back by Calkin, who puts up two. By the way, while we've got you all here, don't forget, as Mr. Goodson's getting a call over the PA system, don't, for, don't forget that we have one more boys basketball contest this season before playoffs begin. That's Friday against Auburn. And then come back Saturday, we are hosting winter volleyball sectional championships all day. All four games will be brought to you by JDTV. Stickle wide left goes out. Now winter volleyball, uh, those winter volleyball games should be something else too. Very excited for those. Oh, I'm so thrilled at an opportunity to be able to call volleyball, especially at the sectional championship level. You're not going to want to miss that all day Saturday. Got lots of good things coming your way here on JD TV. That was a foul, but honestly, with Mr. Goodson's phone is going nuts right now. Mr. Goodson, our athletic director, doesn't understand technology. And you have to be imagining that the referees aren't happy about that because that's disruption of play. That is just standard aux responsibility. When you have the phone and you have the aux on a stage this big inside a high school arena at a game this big, you have to be mindful of what you're doing on your phone so it doesn't get disconnected. I mean, don't get us wrong. We love Mr. Goodson. He's a great AD. Just, Absolutely. Just, I had to show him how to get to his email the other day. That's all it is. Eight points for Tristan Henderson now. Stickle to Bates. Bates across to Keeler. Stickle shakes his man. And the Red Rams kept outside of the ring right now. We haven't really seen much of that this game. The Red Rams having a hang beyond the arc. Usually they haven't had much trouble penetrating. Bates does, though. He falls. And now Aiden Betts stops, gives it to Culkin. Three-pointer with a hand in his face. Aiden Betts puts up a big three. And a 12-point lead to start this fourth quarter has now quickly diminished into only a six-point lead. ESM is storming back right now. And the ESM faithful coming alive. Koberger has been kind of quiet in this half. As he tried to put another one back. Goes, the, goes JD's way. Koberger was absolutely light out, playing like a man possessed in the first half. But in the second half, he has been quiet. Yeah, and credit to ESM and their defense. That'll, bu that'll bust it open, though. 22 for the, points for Brendan Koberger. But for the most part of this second half, they've been able to make the proper adjustments to, to kind of quiet him down. Obviously, you can't stop him on every possession, but they've, they've, they've done what they needed to do. 
ESM, despite a record of 8-9, and nine, is a very talented team, and Jim Kilpatrick is a great head coach, and you cannot discount the power of good coaching. Three-pointer for Calkin, off the mark. Calkin gets his own rebound, poked out by Scalinger. Pass to no one in particular, picked up by Keeler. What's the holdup? Ooh, and the Spartans got lucky with that foul call there. Anthony Sickle was going to have a wide open lane to the basket. First of the day for Aiden Betts. So Stickle taking his time. Yeah, and you can hear Coach Ike telling his players, patience, run they, down this shot clock, get a smart shot. Was it smart or just skill or 100% concentrated power of will from Anthony Stickle? It's also 100% reason to remember the name. Shout out to Mike Shinoda. Now a full timeout taken. Yeah, and we mentioned the teamwork earlier of this James LeDewitt unit and the way they're able to play and bounce off of the energy of each other. And you're seeing that live right now in this, within this second half. Kohlberger not quite getting it going, only four points within the second half. But Stickle, Delpha, Bates all stepping up and kind of filling that role and still being able to support that offensive attack. Now let's talk a little bit about how the Red Rams have been playing on this 11-game win streak of theirs. What you see right now is the left column is the lowest total of those respective statistical categories that they have had during this 11-game win streak. Right column is the highest. There have been games where they're only shooting 26.8 and they're still winning. But at the same time, sometimes they can have a turnover percentage of 9%. Put up 18 steals, 39 rebounds. This team, when they get going, are just about unbeatable. And even when they don't, they still are an incredibly formidable challenger. Yeah, and a lot of that, as I said earlier, goes into they're able to force teams to play their style of basketball, which is long offensive possessions, not easy three-pointers, so difficult to get in within that paint. And they play it so well, and they're able to do it so consistently, which is why they're on this 11-game win streak. And they're hoping to make it 12 tonight. As Bates passes to Stickle. This game has been played at a breathless pace. Red Rams get it back. That's Keeler. Such an incredible contest, all to raise money for a great cause here in the fourth annual Hoops for Courage game. Although, honestly, thanks to 2020 and 2021, can you really call anything annual anymore? Because there was just a huge two-year gap for literally everything. Yeah, it still doesn't even feel real, the time that we're living in, but it's so great that we're able to come back to these moments and get these back within our, our everyday lives. Anthony Stickle missed a big three, but he was given a lot of time by the Spartans there. They got to close up those gaps. And he'll only miss them for so long. That's true. He already has 10 points on the night. Thomas deflected by Koberger, pleading his case. But it did look like he had the last hand on it as that pass was intended for Tristan Henderson. And a timeout called by James Willowitt. Yeah, and Henderson actually has been pretty quiet, even within the second half again. And you've just got to look to the defensive play. It's taking two people to guard him within that paint, but they're doing it so well, and they're not fouling him. That's the biggest thing. Now, how about the guarding against James Wilderwitt? As we take a look at their score report tonight, this is a heat map of their field goal percentage throughout the season. And I think the thing that sticks out most to me is actually not that most of their shots are concentrated within the key, but just how balanced it is, how there really aren't any weak spots besides the fact that for some reason they're 0 for 12 from this particular part of the court. Everywhere else is very even. You know, if you had looked at this graph, the same graphic, let's say a month, 
a month and a half ago, it would look drastically different. The ability to shoot the three-pointer has really emerged for this offense and has given them the boost that they needed to be able to win these type of games. They started out the season shooting around 30%. Now they're shooting 36.4, and their three-point shooting is up to 27.8. Seamus really come together as the season's gone on. That's off the mark. And Koberger, have we ever seen him jump that high this season? Certainly not on a rebound. I've seen it on a block, but wow, that's impressive. And we wonder why we haven't seen a dunk from him yet. That's pivoting. Koberger, quick feed to Scalinger, back to Koberger. Give, go, give, go, give, go, green light. And Stickle staying a little too close. Now Cole not. Thomas goes to the line. Yeah, he wasn't shooting, I don't think. And I don't think they're in the bonus either. They are in the bonus. I see. So maybe that strategy from Coach Ike to send one of their worse or uh, free, free throw shooters to the line and it works out for them. Especially since it prevented a big breakaway as well. Wise moves from Coach Ike. Wonder if he learned that from Jim Beheim. Man, you best believe he learned a, probably learned a lot from Jim Beheim. I just think it's the funniest thing that here we have as there's five seconds on the shot clock, Koberger double teamed and fouled. Or they called a jumper, actually. But I think it's the funniest thing that here's Jeff Ike, a high school basketball coach who can just casually drop into conversation. Yeah, I talked to I talked to Jim the other day. Yeah, Jim who? Oh, Jim Bayheim. That's a flex that not many people have. And Keeler couldn't flex on him. 30-second timeout called emphatically by Coach Ike as JD very quickly got that possession back. Yeah, and that is a huge steal and a huge turnover that's going to determine the course of this game. Now they're able to run another 30 seconds off of this shot clock. Only two and a half minutes left. And ESM down 12 right now. And can we just take a moment to appreciate the suit of assistant coach John Barlow right now? In the 1970s drip. Oh, you got to give him a fit check. That's Mr. Barlow. I'll give you a, a fit check. It says this fit came out of the Sears catalog. Hey, he's Mr. Put It On right now, though. He's showing out for the biggest game of the year, and rightfully so. Not only is he showing out, his players are as well. The Red Rams are playing like they usually do, which is a great compliment. Up 12 right now over the formidable Spartans, who, walking back from this timeout, look a little bit discouraged. They're going to have to keep their head high if they want to come back and win this one. Yeah, and the way to, to lose a game before you even play it is mentally. If you mentally know, and even in a situation like this where you're in the game, you're down, if you mentally give up and say there's no way we're coming back, then you're not going to win this game. You have to convince yourself and your teammates that you can come back and give yourselves a shot. Anthony Stickle to Ben Skellinger. Koberger, no three, getting closer, doesn't have to take the low percentage shots. When he can make shots like that, and you know what, Mr. Goodson's phone going off kind of sounded like an appropriate sound effect for that. And the and bench they get is the loving they were it. Looking for. Koberger up to 26 points. His career high is 27, which he got in the last game as well. Yeah, and he's been matching his career high in, it seems like, the, all of the last five games. 150 left in this contest. The Red Rams trying to play keep away. Koberger with a pick for Stickle. Kept close by Betts. Passes into Bates. Three people in the corner. 
goes out and poked out by Usman Calkin. A big call going the Red Rams' way. And again, they're just able to wind this clock down. Now a minute and a half left. ESM down 14. Also of note, Red Rams, well, six fouls committed by ESM, which means they're almost in the bonus too. So Lower it would take a perfect bets. game from ESM from here on out to be able to come back. That's correct, although there's one foul for JD. Perfect, perfect game is possible. That's the fourth foul for Aiden Bates. You don't want to lose him with a minute and a half left. But I think that also is a strategical foul to foul Henderson, knowing that he's not their best uh, free throw shooter. As demonstrated. He is now three for five tonight. Make it four for six, and a certain Josh DeCaney is in the comment section right now. Ah, that sounds familiar. Nine points for Kristen Henderson tonight. Full court press employed by ESM. Rolls out. Cole Thomas pleads his innocence. On deaf ears, Red Rams lead by 13. And off to Delpha. And the Red Rams are going to want to kill as much time as possible. And they do such a good job at this. Such a great coach in Coach Ike, and he teaches them great clock management. Oh, and a big lane opened up for Skellinger, but he didn't see it. Charging in, Thomas spins off the rim. That was the biggest miss of the night for either team. And that thing just hung on the rim, leaving everybody waiting. That was like a disaster film. Will it, won't it? And it wouldn't. But it's not going to matter now. Anthony Stickle just toying with Aiden Betts. Now 12 seconds on the clock for the shot clock, 20 seconds left in the game, so they're going to have to get a shot or something or just go out. That works too. Our clock was still running. There's 19.1 on the clock. So caught up in this, we forgot to stop it ourselves. And in the biggest of games of the entire season, the Red Rams have put on their greatest performance I think I can confidently say so far. Certainly the most consistent and certainly the most offensive. And I won't lie, if you had told me maybe a month or so ago that this Red Rams team would be on what's now going to be a 12-game win streak and undefeated within their league, I wouldn't have believed you. They have come so far over the course of this season, learning to work together as a team, the chemistry they've built, and this is a huge, big-time win for them. Well, you cannot discount the fact that they are currently an All-State honorable mention, and those first five games, four of them came against Class AA teams. And that is all she wrote. And there goes the flock. No one's going to be shepherding them back to their seats, not after a win like this. As the James Will DeWitt Red Rams have defeated the East Syracuse Manoa Spartans 49-34 in the biggest game of the season. Mr. Goodson trying to maintain order here as the team still got to shake hands at the end of this one. Oh, and it's tough, especially for the fans. They get so amped up and they're just ready to celebrate with the team. But Mr. Goodson is right, gotta, gotta show sportsmanship first, then you can celebrate with the fans. That's true, sportsmanship is paramount. But what a sweet victory for the Red Rams, extending their win streak to 12 over their most bitter rival. And again, 12-0 within their league. They have yet to lose against an Empire opponent. And that is gonna be huge for them when it comes playoff time, which is just around the corner. 
First stop is Auburn on Friday. Next stop, New Hartford. They're gunning for him. You know it. And that will be a matchup for the ages if we get to see it. But you best believe this Red Rams team will be going far. So don't forget that we will be bringing you J.D. Boys versus Auburn on Friday. We'll be bringing you the Winter Volleyball Sectional Championships all day long on Saturday. And then Tuesday is the seeding meeting for basketball sectional playoffs. So once that happens, we'll know which ones we'll be bringing you for the boys and the girls. As there's a different structure to sectionals this year, I've been told that everyone gets in. So preliminaries, quarters, that should be all us. So we're excited to, be, to bring you those contests in the very near future. But in the meantime, my name is Sam Gelfand, the voice of the Red Rams on behalf, on behalf of Nick DeCaney, my broadcast partner, Mike Meskos, our cameraman, and everyone here at JDTV. Have a very good night wherever you may be.